Open house party. Here we are. And look who just walked in. It's Charlie Poo. I just walked in. I'm sitting on your very comfortable leather couch. No, Le- no leather seat. Well, they're plastic with Naga hide, whatever they call it this week. <laughs> it is. It's, it's, it's like leather. It's really cool. It's leatherette. Nice. Leatherette. Yeah, leatherish. It's very comfortable. And you're wearing a leatherette uh, camouflage jacket. I'm wearing a fake camouflage jacket <laughs> that so, is overpriced. Here we are in the world of plastic. Yes. <laughs> Actually, you've been here for a couple of minutes, and we were talking about you writing a song Yeah. Uh, when you were in Tokyo on yeah. your phone. Yeah. Now, how did this happen? You were writing along? It's a, it's the song, It's the song. Uh, if people don't know, it's on. It's track five on my album, Nine Track Mine. It's called We Don't Talk Anymore with Selena Gomez um, featured on it. And the song literally, I was telling you before, literally the song started out with uh, um, an acoustic guitar recorded on my iPhone imported into Pro Tools with the kick drum and that's literally how the it wasn't it's the most improperly recorded song of all time the vocals were recorded in a closet that was soundproofed by clothes in my lawyer's house like where I was staying because I didn't have a house in LA yet <laughs> <laughs> but wh- wh- where did the title come up from someone was talking about something my friend um, had just broken up with this girl and he was like very visually distraught and I was trying to like cheer him up and he was like do you still talk to th-? I just simply asked him do you still talk to that girl anymore and he's like, no, we don't talk anymore. And I was just like, we don't talk anymore. <laughs> we don't talk anymore. Like trying to be a goofball. We don't talk anymore. Yeah, not that Cliff Richards song, but like, you know, just uh, something a little. I, I wasn't even thinking of that. But, uh, um, and uh, he was like, still sad, but he was, then he was like, yo, you should try and uh, record that. It's kind of dope. And I recorded the voice memo on my phone. And then I took it to Tokyo where the vibe was present, and yeah, that's what happened. And the guitar got added, and then it became a song, and now, is that what's on the album, the iPhone vocal? The iPhone iPhone vocal, the iPhone uh, guitar, um, the kick drum that was recorded um, with a trash can layered into like a real no. yeah well there's five there's five different kick drums there's wow. the, there's the fake kick drum which is like you know like a Skrillex kick drum or something like that like the really electronic and then layered with uh, a trash can like uh, to, and I pan it left and right so to make it really wide because listening to old Steely Dan stuff, which I'm obsessed with, which in my opinion is the best mixed, uh, you know, me- record like Pretzel Logic is like some of the best mixed music of all time. They, um, they, they put reverbs on their kicks, but they didn't pan them stereo. They panned them mono, so it would cut right through when you played on your speaker. So I did the same thing with this record. So when you hear the kick drums, it's just, just. Let's get a taste of it here. This is Cut 5 from 9-Track Mind, Charlie Puth, Open House Party. We don't talk anymore. We don't talk anymore. Wonderful. wonderful. We don't talk anymore like we used to do. That's the guitar. We don't laugh anymore. What was all of it for? We don't talk anymore like we used to do. Well, all right. Well, we could play the whole thing. We could play the whole thing, but but Lou says we should wait. Lou's gonna Lou's gonna make us wait. Okay, well, we'll have to wait. So we'll play it later on. I want to find out the story of how Selena Gomez got on there, and it's coming up. Charlie Puth. I want to find out about "See You Again" and the real story about how that was written on Open House Party. Coming up. Open House Party is the party in your Open house party, John Garabedi in with Charlie Puth. And what would have happened if Fast and Furious 7 hadn't been made or Paul Walker hadn't died? I mean, these things that, that, that have a corollary influence yeah. on all of us. Well, I like your career with See You Again. You're 100% right. I, I think, uh, well, you know, I really wrote my, my friend. I went to Berkeley College of Music, not too far from where we're at right now and uh my friend um passed away on that mass Ave bridge he got unfortunately hit by a car and uh it was really devastating and the moment i found out i said i wanted to write a song about it but i was like really freaked out because i didn't want to write a song and then listen to it one week later or a couple weeks later and be like oh screw that song i don't like that song i should have i'm not honoring my friend i should have written i'm gonna wait until 
it feels right. So it happened two years later when I went into the studio and they were like, can you try writing for, um, you know, the situation that happened with Paul Walker? Because Paul, if, if you don't know, passed away in a car accident as well. And uh, I, I, they were like, try writing for it. And I'm like, I don't know how to do that because I didn't know Paul. But I did have, a, I did experience something similar where my friend passed away. Vin Diesel had his friend pass away. So I'm going to try and be Vin Diesel. I pretended to be Vin Diesel when I was writing See You Again. And I'll tell you all about it when I see you again. That song. So here I am pretending to be Vin Diesel in the middle of the studio. And... Uh, I, I'm thinking to myself, what would Vin text to Paul? Like, what would his last text message be? And that was, I'll tell you all about it when I see you again. And that just have that sentence just happened to fit in with the melody. It's so rare. It never happens. And it happened in 10 minutes, too. It just happened to fit in with the melody that I had. I just knew it was really special. And that's literally how it happened. It's been... Open House Party, Charlie Puth's hanging out with us tonight. We were talking about how See You Again was written basically in about 10 minutes to a melody he'd written before. You know, I've heard that story about 10 minutes so many times from so many artists about their biggest hits. Yeah. That it happened in five. This, the album was done, and they said, well, let's do one more thing. So mm -hmm. uh, let's. Uh, so out comes Push It by Salt and Peppa, which was the B side. It was like, well, eh, nothing. It was the B side? It was the B side. No kid. I thought that was like. Yeah, I guess that happens because, like, you kind of just like. The, the record label will sometimes put pressure on you to. Uh, you know, they're very organized, but like you need to finish it in this certain amount of time. It's, that's how that song, uh, uh, you know, One Call Away was one of the last songs added to the album, too. And that just, you know, that's a huge smash now. And Megan Trainer told me that uh, she took her album to uh, L.A. Reid. Mm -hmm. It was all done. Mm -hmm. And he said, you don't have the smash hit here that everybody wants. Mm -hmm. He said, see if you can come up with another one. She got angry. She went out and in 10 minutes came up with no. That, you know what? She told me that, and it blew my mind. Uh, you know, I, I, I was like, I was texting her. I was like, "Don't worry, you're gonna come up with it. Just don't worry." That they told me uh, I, I needed to have another song too, and then I, I called Selena up at the, the a couple hours before the album was due. I, I called her up and I was like, "Do you want to sing on this?" And she came over, submitted the album. I didn't even mention that she was on it. And then my label guy wrote me, he was like, who's the girl singing? And I was like, oh, it's Selena. <laughs> yeah, Selena it's Gomez. the biggest star in the world. And here it is, the brand new single. We don't talk anymore. We don't talk anymore. Open house party, rocking coast to coast. So, Charlie Puth, you're on a sold-out world tour. What else do you have going on? I'm still, you know, doing music for other artists, too. Really? Yeah. Writing, producing? Writing, producing. I did a song for... Uh, Fergie and uh, oh she's coming back she's coming back I love her she's, she's incredible she's like Selena Gomez you meet her she is what she is and she's fabulous she's just she gives the best hugs too I love yeah. Fergie <laughs> she's great oh I have something I've got to play for you Wait, Ooh. Hold, hold, on. Wait, hold on so listen to this this is this is before black eyed peas this is Fergie welcome welcome hey, yeah. to the party to the party hey, yeah. We're coming at you So nice and smooth When the John Garabini wow. And the open house crew We're gonna get down, 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 down Have a good time Wow Where's that from? I mean, I know that's your That show. was from standing right where you're sitting <laughs> with a couple of other girls in a, in a, a group called Ooh. Wild Orchid. That was right. Oh that was. God. Oh, my God. That was. Wild Orchid. I remember that. That was Fergie. Yeah, that was Fergie. Uh, you know, I think she was always like a separate entity to the ba Black Eyed Peas, which is why she put out her solo album when she was like, you know, in the middle of their success, too. So it's always been interesting. She was a here. meth addict. She had oh. horrible problems. And oh. Just that she had moved in with her mother. I had no idea. Because she was just so broken, everything was falling apart, depressed, and that's when she got into the Black Eyed Peas, and life turned around for her. Amazing. Well, she's such a talent. I just ran into her in Paris at this, this uh, clothing store that everybody seems to like to go to, and I just was like, I'm not going to run into any friends. And uh, I hear, poof, I'm like, Fergie Ferg. Oh, my God. <laughs> 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 